said hello everyone in Vietnamese doing these intros has given me a huge respect for Phil Collins singing that Tarzan soundtrack 45 times in a bajillion different languages most of us have barely mastered English myself included it's a rainy day here in South Florida what's it like where you guys are I wonder sometimes I like to kick back and think about my listeners my people what are they up to what are their lives like What dreams do they have? Are they right with the Lord? More importantly, are they right with the landlord? I'd say before Jesus, you should worry about Gustavo because he can kick your ass out of your apartment. I'm just saying that's that's number one priority. But yeah, I wonder how you guys are doing. So, you know, maybe I'll set up an email account so you can send me you know, stuff. I did not pause between send me and stuff because I was thinking nudes, by the way. Just, just want to get that off my chest. That's not what I was doing. But you know what? Either way, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. I'd say it if I wanted them. I'd say it right to your face. People believe me. Believe me, okay? If I wanted nudes, I would say it. I'd look you right in the eye and I would say, hey, send me your nudes. I get nudes every day, all the time. Big, big nudes. Everyone sends me their nudes. Every day, I look at my wife, Melania, and I say, Melania, send me your nudes. And she looks at me and goes, Donald, you know I can't do that. You know what time it is. And I go, what, what are you talking about? What time is it? And she goes, time for you to go fuck yourself. She is so romantic. It's incredible. But yeah, I'd like to hear from you guys. Let's see what I can do. Let me get an email going. I'm saying that like it's difficult. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this. I am gonna do this. Now's the time. Right now, this is prime time for communication. If you guys send messages in, they will most likely all be answered. This is prime time for that. You know, it's, it's like trying to get a backstage photo with a band. You're way more likely to get that photo when they're still like playing at the titty bar than when they're at the O2 arena. You know, then you gotta pay money, you gotta go backstage, you gotta wait in line. That whole convoluted cycle. And at the end, they're living in a castle with a moat around it, and you can only reach them if your pigeon can take a letter. That's that's the difference maker right there. That's what it feels like when someone that you want a message is verified. It's just they might as well have a moat with alligators and, and be living in a fortress. That's why people freak the hell out when someone answers their tweet <laughs> or, or comments back on Instagram. If you see The Rock comment back on anyone's Instagram, you know that they're at home going, Oh my God! Or you know, like doing a sound that humans make. I don't know what that was. I tried to go for like a lady scream. It sounded like somebody sliding down a skyscraper's window. Just, ah! oh Lord Jesus. Oh my God, David, hold on. How the hell did he get outside his Just window? Just hold on tight, buddy. We're going to get your help. Guys, guys, I was trying to feed the pigeons. I was trying to feed ah. the pigeons. Well, uh, as sad as this is, you know, I think we should keep in mind that um, Dave was pretty dumb. I mean, show of hands. It's not the first time he's fallen. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> But we gotta cut those verified people a break. I mean, I, I get it. You get that feeling, that initial like, oh, oh, you're verified. Sorry, I didn't know you were verified. You should have put on your crown or something so I could just know from the photograph that you are royalty. Now, I get how that could be an initial reaction. But, you know, you gotta look at it this way. It's their security. It's their security. That's how I look at it. It's Bill Burr's security. It's The Rock's security. It's uh, whoever the hell. I don't know. Neil Patrick Harris. These people use the verified little check mark or the little thing on Instagram that says they're verified as like a security team. Because if they didn't have that, their phone wouldn't even be beeping with notifications. It would just be one long beep. You know, it's, it would just last forever. That's how I see it. When I see the check mark of a verified account, it's a symbol to me that means, holy shit, this person needs psychological protection. From the tidal wave of messages that would just be smashing into their face on a daily basis, nonstop, 24-7, when the millions and millions of The Rocks fans go to sleep in America, you bet your ass they're waking up in China to tweet at them. It's like a boxing match, only your opponent gets to tag out and have a fresh guy come in and just keep beating the shit out of you until he recovers. That's all the check mark is. It's protection against that bombardment of direct messaging. You know, shout outs. Oh, hey, I just shaved my balls. Shout out to Jerry Seinfeld. You know, just what the... 
First off, how would Jerry answer that? Second off, imagine with all these people shouting him out for whatever the hell reason. Shout outs are like, it's the norm to expect them to go unanswered for the most part, but imagine if they could directly message him or directly email him or like, in, in a way that was very, you know, straightforward where he, they would know, Jerry just ignored my message. If, if it came to that, what would he do? What would Jerry do? Spend the whole day messaging people back? Not if he wants to give real responses. That's literally the entire day gone. You ever tried to answer someone thoughtfully? That, to me, that takes forever. For one message, it takes forever. I can't imagine trying to answer, like, hundreds of thousands of people's messages with a real, thoughtful, complete answer. But that's what everybody would like, too. That's what, that's what everybody... I would like that. You know, if I sent something to somebody, I would like a genuine answer. And like I said earlier, luckily, right now, I can do that. I can answer people's messages. Just about everyone. There's always going to be one or two people that I can't answer based on the question they made not really being a complete question or the question not making sense. But everybody else, I try to, I try to get back to. But then again, that's because, you know, the volume of questions and comments or whatever heading my way right now are manageable. They're not that much. I can, yeah, I can answer more or less everybody. But the gap between manageable and unmanageable is very small. It just takes a slight surge in those numbers and suddenly it's just impossible. It's just that I can't, I can't, there's no time. That's what Tom Hanks is screaming at himself in the mirror every day. How am I supposed to answer all these people? There's just no time. There's no time. Please give me a check mark. Because it is time consuming. Very much so. And there is no time. No time for Jerry. No time for The Rock or Tom Hanks or any of these people. What are they going to do? That will be their whole day, their whole week gone. I guess they could send, like, something impersonal, something quick. You know, meet people halfway. Oh, maybe they can send a bunch of happy faces. Everybody getting a kissy face emoji. Nah, that won't work. Even then, that's carpal tunnel. The scariest thing about the relationship between a person and their audience, I think, is when you get a cluster of the audience that gets the opposite of herd mentality where they ignore the fact that they're within a larger group. You know those people? You'll see them tweeting at, like, whoever the hell it is and saying, like, hey, why can't, can't you just answer my, my tweet? I'm just, it's just one tweet, huh? You can't get back to me? You're too good to get back to me? I see how it is. You're not better than me. Next thing you know, they're jumping off a rickety boat in the Bahamas trying to swim ashore to Johnny Depp's island. Oh, I'm gonna find you, Johnny. And when I do, you will sign my memorabilia. Ow, that's a stingray. Ow, ow, bloop, bloop. Breaking news, the body of a 46-year-old woman was found drifting ashore towards Johnny Depp's island. In one arm, she held a life-sized cardboard cutout of Johnny Depp, and in the other, a box full of Mordecai memorabilia. That's right, Mordecai. Out of all the movies. Suzanne Wilkins is survived by her six cats, and six more cats. Holy f But seriously, there's those people. They just, they just forget. They're in a group. Or sometimes, you know, it's, have you ever, like, seen somebody tweet at a celebrity and just felt your heart break for them? Just when you read it with, like, the, the joyous enthusiasm of, like, a five-year-old? That's what their tweet reads like as they're trying to talk to whoever the hell it would be. Who would it be? Obama? I don't know. As people send these tweets out, Hey, been a long-time fan. I'd really appreciate if you give me a, a shout-out. Maybe send me an autographed photo? And you just know that's not going to happen. That genuinely makes me sad. <laughs> that genuinely makes me sad. Despite the fact that I'm cackling like a banshee, this is, it makes me sad when I see that. I don't know what it is. Just seeing, seeing people just throw, throw a dream out at the universe, you know? Chucking a boomerang of hope at the moon. But it doesn't come back. It just gets carried out by the no gravity of space. And they're still down here on Earth, looking up and hoping. It's making me sad right now. Just talking about it. Why does my sad sound like I'm constipated? Maybe that's why we haven't had, like, contact with aliens yet, you know? What if they're, like, verified in the universe? In the Twitter of the universe? We're sending out signals and they're just like, Mm-mm, sweetie, if I answer you, I gotta answer everybody. Mm-mm. For those of you with no knowledge of sci-fi, that's how Martians talk. Take me to your leader. Mm. <laughs> and every time they do that, that little, mm. A little bit of poop comes out. We come in peace. Oh my god! Oh, gross! I apologize. Is that how aliens talk? We'll know soon enough. Tom DeLong is claiming he's got insight into the UFO phenomenon, people. That could either become something amazing, or it could be the end of his career. We're gonna see. 
It's either going to blow your mind or it's going to be the biggest case of secondhand embarrassment since Meet the Parents. Greg Fokker's troubles are going to be nothing compared to the guy who believed the government and put his whole career on that if it turns out to not be true. If it is true, that's going to be amazing and a nightmare for me in many in many different ways. I've said it before in a video. If 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 an alien appears on Earth, that's the end of everything I want to do. Guys, I want to make movies. I want to make music. I want to act. I want to make you guys laugh. I want to give you profound, vibrant experiences. There's nothing that's going to be as amazing to look at, to, to witness, as a spaceship. Come on. You're going to watch me in concert or you're going to watch the ship that's floating above San Francisco? You're going to see my movie or are you going to see the alien that's just laser blasting the faces off of Mount Rushmore? Give me a break. That's the end. Oh, did you hear Denzel Washington is playing Othello in the local theater? No, I didn't. You know why? Because I was too busy not giving a shit because there's aliens. The faces you're going to see of the last people playing acoustic guitar on a street corner once the aliens are here. That's going to be like the most iconic symbol for depressing things. Just wait for it. Just wait till there's just ships everywhere and there's still one guy out there thinking, I'm going to be the voice of my generation. Hey, Mr. UFO man. You know, that's not, no, that's it. That's it. Bye-bye concerts, bye-bye the Grammys. No one's gonna be renting Blu-rays from a red box, that's for sure. You wanna watch the new De Niro movie? Grandma, please, I can see the neighbors being probed as we speak. I know entertainment when I see it. Look at that, using tree fingers. That's an art form. That's like dancing right there. Oh yeah, we'll see what the future holds, people. But guess what? At the end of this episode, you can send in anything you want to owhpodcast at hotmail.com. That's owhpodcast at hotmail.com. That's right, people. It's ready for you. Send if you want to send stuff. Just, gentlemen, please, no nudes. It's traumatizing enough having to see my own balls. I don't need to see yours. Unless they're like, you know, somehow amazing. Like if, like if your balls are the size of watermelons, you know, that might be worth a peek. I'm just saying, if your nads don't belong in the X-Men, I don't need to see it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Oops, Wrong Hole. I'm Ramsey's Ralvacast. Feel free to follow me on all the social medias. That's right, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, baby. That's R-A-L-V-A-C-A-S-N-T. See you there, people. And uh, send anything you want. O-W-H podcast at hotmail.com. Until next time, hasta la bye-bye.